What's up, everybody? I'm Deputy Deep, and welcome to the first of my Monster Hunter guides to the actual monsters in the game. This is a series I actually promised you guys all the way back in Monster Hunter Cross when I showed you the Monster Hunter 101 guide for anybody who watched that back then. And then I promised it again during the 240 hour live stream and I asked you guys which monsters you'd like to see guides for. And there were two specific walls in Monster Hunter World that people really hit that they asked for guides for and that was Anjanath and Nergigante. Now I've done a lot of Nergigante hunting over the last few days so I'm going to start off with the Nergigante guide but I will move to Anjanath next and then any other monsters that you guys want to see covered in the comments down below, let me know. I can then cover those monsters. So these guides have three parts. The first is basic information on the monster. This is actually available in game, but I'm just going to let you know and cover it in the guide anyway. The second part is going to be covering the monster's move set in a great deal of detail all the different moves the monster can do, all the different variants of those moves if the monster's enraged, or in the case of Nogagante, if he has spikes on certain parts of his body, it changes certain moves. And then we're going to finish each of the guides off with how to hunt the monster with a slower weapon, for example, the greatsword or the hammer, how to hunt it with a fast weapon, like the sword and shield, or the dual swords or the long sword, and with a shielded weapon, which is like the lance or the gun lance, and finally with a ranged weapon like the light bow gun, the bow, or the heavy bow gun. So, looking at Nergigante's monster info, we know that its horns are breakable. All of its spikes on the different parts of its body as they grow are breakable, but these will regrow throughout the battle. And its tail is both breakable for the spikes and cuttable, which is removing the tail and getting an extra car from the tail and also reducing the damage of some of Nergigante's attacks, which I will cover later on. His weaknesses, he has a 3-star weakness to Thunder, a 2-star weakness to Dragon, and then a 1-star weakness to all other elements. So if you're using a fast weapon like the Jewel Blades or the Sword and Shield, you really want to be using Thunder Element as a massive priority. Or if you really want to go Dragon, make sure you've got some Elder Seal going on to seal this Elder Dragon away. Finally, when it comes to status, he has a two-star weakness to every single status. So that's a medium weakness to every status. That's going to make it pretty easy to light bow gun him to sleep if you're in a group hunt, to sleep bomb him, to paralyze him with parashots. You can probably get two, maybe even three paralysis off per match, depending on which light bow gun you're using and whether you have access to para level two. And the same for poison, which is very useful as it will chip away at his quite large multiplayer health stat as the hunt goes on. Moving on to Nogagante's moves, he has an impressive move set, but he is quite slow and deliberate. So a lot of his more powerful moves are very heavily telegraphed, and I'm going to show you how to spot every single move in his move set and hopefully avoid or block all of them. The moves are split into three categories, low, medium, and high, and it's for both how telegraphed they are and for how much damage they do. So in the low telegraphed, low damage moves, we have a claw swipe, both left and right claws can swipe. And when he's enraged, a lot of the time, instead of doing the swipes, he'll do big claw slams. These are slightly more telegraphed and quite a bit more powerful, so watch out for the claw slams. He also has this bite, which he uses very, very rarely, but it's a chasing bite. It's very low power. It's almost not telegraphed at all, but it will trip you, which is annoying. And finally, he has a big tail slam. This tail slam will always go down and to his left. So if you're behind him trying to cut his tail, try and stand on the right hand side of his tail. And that will mean that you will avoid the tail slam. You may still be hit by the tremors from it, but that won't do any damage. So if you're trying to cut the tail, try and be on that right hand side away from the angle of this tail slam. On to the medium telegraphed medium power attacks. We have a big tail swipe. He will do a 200 degree turn while swiping with his tail. This does quite a bit of damage and it's actually a very, very rare attack. I have almost no footage of this from 9 or 10 different hunts that I did getting footage for this video. You have three options when trying to avoid the tail swipe. You can either roll through it. This requires quite good timing, but it is a very fast turn. So the amount of time that the hitboxes will be interacting is quite short, making it one of the easier moves in the game to evade through using those precious iframes on your roll. Another way to avoid it is standing just under Nergigante's back legs. It's very difficult to get footage of this, so I don't think I have any. I do apologize for that, but the tail swipe will actually just miss you completely, and you'll be able to continue to wail on Nogagante. And the final way is just to evade out of range. Next up, we have Nogagante's wing opening move. The way that he will telegraph this is he will plant his wings in the ground before waiting about half a second and then flinging them open. 
This does have a wind box that extends past the wings that will stun you but not do any damage, but if the wing itself hits you, it will actually do quite a chunk of damage. This is a defensive move that Nogaganta uses, but it's also a massive opportunity to get huge amounts of damage on the front of his head because the wings do not hit that and the tip of his tail. Therefore, if you're in the right place at the right time, this wing opening attack is actually a massive opportunity to get really good damage off on the more dangerous parts of Nogaganta to hit. Next up, let's talk about his head slam. There are two versions of this head slam, one when he has no spikes on his head and one when he has spikes on his head. The no spikes version of the head slam, he just slams his head into the ground and does damage in a very small area. This is super easy to avoid. You can roll just out of range and take no damage and then easily get several good hits off on his head while he is recovering from this attack. The version of this attack with spikes on it is much more dangerous. He will slam his head into the ground and then fire spikes out at a very high speed. This is what causes people to say that Nogagante has broken hitboxes. They're not actually broken at all. People just miss the fact that these spikes are launching out of Nerg and therefore thinking that they're getting hit by a hitbox that is coming from his body when really they're from these airborne spikes. A lot of his attacks incorporate these spikes once he has grown them, so I will point those out as we go along. The best way to avoid the spiked version of this attack is to roll away at a 90 degree angle to Nergagante. The spikes have a very, very fast moving hitbox, which makes them even easier to avoid with the dodge iframes than the tail swipe. So you can easily dodge sideways and avoid any damage from this attack and then go in and still get a couple of hits off while Nergagante recovers from this animation. Next up, let's talk about Nergagante's wing slide, one of the most annoying moves that Nergagante has. He drops himself onto the ground, which when I was hunting him for the first time, fooled me into thinking I'd got a knockdown, and then slides towards you at high speed using his wing as a shoulder charge. This move does a lot of damage, but is actually surprisingly easy to avoid. Your roll will move slightly faster than the wing charge, so as soon as you see him slam into the ground, spam your roll away from Nogagante directly and you won't get hit by any of the hitbox of this attack. It's super easy to avoid and super easy to punish as it has quite a long stand-up animation from Nogagante. You can easily get two or three big hits off. Next up, we have to talk about Nogagante's big leap. This is if you are a great distance from Nogagante, and you're going to see this a lot more often if you are solo gunning, but he does a huge leap where he covers a massive distance and punches the ground with a strong punch as he gets to you. The best way to avoid this is with a simple roll. All you need to do is roll to the right one time as he jumps, and as he slams his right hand into the ground, you are going to dodge this attack 100% of the time without taking any damage. If you're feeling really, really brave and you see that he has spikes on his right hand that you want to break, if you roll to the left, his right hand is going to slam into the ground right next to you. It might still hit you, but if it doesn't, you have a really good opportunity to get some hits off on that right claw and break those spikes. Another of Nogagante's medium telegraphed attacks is his turning uppercut. It's almost like a shuriken, but he also turns his body by about 45 degrees to face a new direction. This attack is telegraphed by a big head tilt backwards. You can see it very easily if you're far away from Nerg. Unfortunately, when you're closer to him, it's a bit harder to spot. But watch out for this attack as it will launch you into the air, doing a huge amount of damage. I've also been stunned by this attack several times and then comboed for the finish. So watch out for the turning uppercut. It can be a real pain. Finally, in these medium moves, we have the charge attack. This attack is, again, super rare. He almost never uses it. And when he does, it's quite heavily telegraphed. He will lower his head and then charge a short distance with his horns. If it hits you, it does a fair chunk of damage, but it shouldn't hit you. It's very easy to notice and to avoid. Finally, let's talk about his highly telegraphed, highly powerful attacks. These are the attacks that most people complaining about Nogagante being a wall are the ones that are going to be killing them. It is very, very difficult to avoid certain parts of these attacks and you really need to be ready for them before Nogagante even starts his animation. Otherwise, you are going to catch those claws. First up, we've got the least powerful of these moves. It is the Groundbreaker Punch. Nogagante will rear up onto his hind legs, pull back his right claw and then punch into the ground. It will have two stages, one where it hits the ground and one where it then penetrates the ground and causes tremors around the punch. Now, if he doesn't have spikes, that's it. It has the two stages, one hit, one tremor. If you get hit by the punch, it's going to do a huge amount of damage. If you get hit by the tremor, it's going to put you into that awful long tremor animation where you can do basically nothing and you're going to get hit by a follow-up. But even worse, 
if he has spikes on his right hand, he is going to shoot spikes out from that hand as he creates the tremor. So you will get tremored and then hit by spikes for a huge amount of damage. This move needs to be avoided at all costs. And my advice would be roll away from Nergigante as soon as he rears up on his hind legs. It is never a good sign when Nergigante decides to rear up on his hind legs. So roll away. Don't get hit by this. Next up, we have the Superman Punch. Now, the Superman Punch is different from the ultimate attack of Nergigante, which is the Superman Slide, but it starts in exactly the same way. Nergigante will fly a short distance into the air in that reared up position with his body upright, and then will zoom towards you and punch the ground. It then breaks the ground. If spikes are present, those are shot out, but even if they're not present, it still creates tremors, just like the Groundbreaker Punch does, but this time aerial. This is a very, very strong move. If you get hit by it, if you're just fighting Nergigante for the first time and you haven't fully upgraded your armor with armor spheres, it is quite likely to put you on a kitty cart. So watch out for this move. Luckily, super easy to avoid. As soon as he's in the air and starts zooming towards you, you start rolling again at a right angle to Nergigante. He will miss. This move targets at the moment that he reaches the peak of his flight and not when he starts flying, like the Superman slide, which makes the Superman slide much harder to avoid. Let's move on to the Superman Slide now then. The Superman Slide is Nergigante's ultimate attack, but luckily it's super easy to predict as it only ever happens when every single spike on his body is black and hardened. And once all of those spikes are black and hardened, he will use this move within 20 seconds or so. So my advice with this move is actually to sheathe your weapon as soon as you see him become fully hardened because he will roar before he uses this attack, which puts you into raw stun, which means that it's impossible to roll out of the way with your weapon unsheathed once he has roared. You are going to be hit by this attack if you're caught by that roar with your weapon unsheathed. However, if you take my advice and sheathe your weapon before he hits you with that roar, you have a really easy way out of the death that this attack is about to bring you, and that is to sprint away from Nergigante and perform a dive. Your panic dive will protect you from the entire length of the hitbox of this attack, rendering it completely useless and actually handy to you as it removes all of those spikes from Nergigante's body, ready for you to mess him up again. Now that we've talked about all of Nergigante's moves, we have one more thing to discuss, and that is the best way to hunt Nergigante with all the different types of weapon. I've broken the weapons down into four loose playstyles, but obviously all 14 weapons will play very differently against Nergigante. This is a general guide, not an overall how to hunt him with this particular weapon, because that video would take hours to do each of the 14 weapons. So here we go. When you're using a light, fast weapon like the dual swords or the sword and shield, there are two places you want to be. One is behind the right side of Nergigante's tail. As I mentioned earlier when talking about the tail slam attack, this is the safest place to attack the tail from, and it makes it really easy to sever the tail with dual blades, sword and shield, longsword, and the like. The other place that you want to be once you have severed the tail is just behind Nergigante's left claw. This means that you are not in the hitbox of Nergigante's turning uppercut attack, and it also means that the only attack you really have to worry about that is a heavy damaging attack that he can hit you without first turning and allowing you time to dodge back into position behind that claw is his fall over wing slide attack. This attack, as I said before, if you know it's coming, if you know it's going to happen, is very easy to avoid just by rolling directly away from Nogagante. So this is quite a safe place to be. Obviously, you can still get hit by attacks, but make sure you keep yourself healed up and you should be just fine behind the left claw or behind the tail on the right. When using a heavier weapon like the hammer or the greatsword, you normally want to be aiming for the front of the claws or the front of the head, and you do this by maintaining your distance from Nogagante and waiting for your opportunity. The whole point of heavy weapons is that you do huge amounts of damage in one hit and then wait for your next opportunity to do the same again. Don't get too greedy when using the hammer or greatsword, and you can get some really nice knockdowns followed up by massive, massive amounts of damage with those weapons finishing combos. Shielded weapons, in my opinion, turn Nogigante into a bit of a baby. As long as you use the guard plus skill, this is not the guard up skill, you can block pretty much all of his attacks for very little stamina or health cost, with the exception of the Groundbreaker Punch. For some reason, the multiple hits of the Groundbreaker Punch really shred through shield even with guard plus 5 and do a lot of damage. Guard up is not required against Nogigante. None of his attacks are naturally unblockable. So don't worry about running guard up at all if you're taking a lance or gun lance to this fight. 
Ranged weapons equally have quite an easy time compared to the faster weapons with Nergagante. You can stand well back and just unload shot after shot into the weakened spikes. Make sure you focus on one area at a time and try and break those spikes before they turn black because obviously once they've turned black they will resist a lot of your shot damage. He's also very weak to status so if you're using light bowgun or bow make sure that you focus on putting him to sleep and bombing him or paralyzing him for much easier hits. Pierce also hits him incredibly hard if it starts going through those weakened spikes, especially if you get a side shot on him when he's got spikes that are weaker, the bone spikes on his arms and on his head. You can get them through both arms and through his head with one pierce shot doing a huge amount of damage. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I hope it helped you. If you have followed all these tips, you should be slapping up and clapping up Nergagante in no time. Once again, please let me know down below what monsters you'd like me to cover next, and I'll see you guys next time. All right then, guys, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, you can click up here to see more videos of this type on my channel. If you want to check out something else a little bit different, then you can click down here. And if you want to see everything that I upload, you can click the subscribe button right here.